Good morning, Living Lord. It is good to be here with you this morning. What a great day we have today. And um, it's been a great weekend so far, and so we thank you for being here to include God in that wonderful time and this wonderful weekend. And this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And as we do that this morning, you are invited, whether you are at home and joining us um, through the magic of broadcast, or whether you are here with us in person today, we are inviting you to stand and join and praise God this morning. And that is the song for this day. And whether you're at home, sing out loud. If you're here, sing in your hearts. And thank you. This is the day. God's day, and we are here to spend that time with God, and so we rejoice in God's presence and give thanks for that each and every day. As we come together to God today, sometimes we feel a little, well, not worthy because of stuff that may have happened throughout the week, and so we want to take this time to kind of clear that out and to make sure that we are all here in the right frame of mind and understanding God's grace and forgiveness 
So let's take a moment now. Close your eyes if you wish. Take a deep breath. And breathe in God's love. And as you exhale, know God's grace. One more breath. And God's grace flooding through you. God, for whatever has happened during this past week, in the world, in our community, in our homes, within our hearts, we ask for your grace as you look upon us for things we have done or left undone, for things we have said or left unsaid. Come into our hearts and remind us of your love. Your forgiveness today is what we ask for so that our hearts may be open to hear your word for us. Continue to remind us that in the words of the psalmist, you remove our sins so far away as the east is from the west that they will never meet and you remember them no more. Be with us and strengthen us for what lies ahead in the coming days and weeks and months and years, that we may continue to live as your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Open your eyes and come back to this space. Know that God's love and forgiveness is there for us always. We only have to turn and receive it. And now... Let's sing along in our hearts or in our homes, uh, in my father's house.
God, you create us to live in community with one another. Form us for life that's faithful and steadfast. Teach us to trust like little children that we may reflect the image of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Snuggle up at home and we'll hear the lessons for today and hear what God is speaking to us. The first reading for today is from Genesis chapter 2, verses 18 through 24. A reading from Genesis. The Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper as his partner. So out of the ground the Lord God formed every animal of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all cattle and to the birds of the air and to every animal of the field. But for the man there was not found a helper as his partner. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and while he slept, took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man, the Lord God made into a woman and brought her to man. Then the man said, This at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman, for out of man this one was taken." Therefore, a man leaves his father and his mother and clings to his wife, and they become one flesh. The, the reading for today. Thanks. Please stand as you are able to receive the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel for this day is according to Mark, the 10th chapter. Some Pharisees came, and to test Jesus, they asked, Is it lawful for a husband to divorce his wife? And Jesus answered them, What did Moses command you? And they said, Moses allowed a husband to write a certificate of dismissal and to divorce her. But Jesus said to them, because of your hardness of heart, Mark, Moses wrote this commandment for you. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. And for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. So the two shall become one, fr one flesh. So they're no longer two, but one. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Then in the house, the disciples asked Jesus again about this matter and said to them, what a, whatever man divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. People were bringing little children to Jesus in order that he might touch them. And the disciples spoke sternly to them. 
But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me, and do not stop them. For it is to such as these that the dominion of God belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the dominion of God as a little child will never enter it. And Jesus took them up in his arms and laid his hands on them and blessed them. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Dear friends, grace and peace to you this day in fullest measure through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, today, here we have it, the texts of terror. These are what some preachers call these texts, and they have been reason for people to eliminate the pastor. Yeah, depending on how you preach on these texts, it uh, causes terror, it causes division, it causes a lot of unrest. And so we're going to pull the lens back a little bit. We could have avoided these altogether, but I didn't think that was fair. Pull the lens back a little bit and see what surrounds all of this, because I think it might give us a different perspective. Mark is on the... Recording about the time that Jesus is actually on the road to Jerusalem. He knows what awaits him there. It's not pleasant. And he continues to teach his disciples. And sometimes they get it, and most often they don't. But it's hard teachings that are along the way. And as he encounters people and towns along the road, things are starting to stir up. Crowds, whole towns, people are suddenly questioning things that they never questioned before. They're hearing this good news in a really different way about God. Right now, in this part, we are here on the borders of Judea beyond the Jordan most likely in an area called Perea, which was the territory of Herod Antipas. Herod, you'll remember, Herod Antipas, was the one who had divorced his wife in order to marry Herodias. And Herodias had been the wife of Antipas's brother. This sounds like kind of like an English king sort of a thing, doesn't it, a little bit? But anyway, here we are with this whole family thing and marriage and divorce. And you remember that it is Herodias, well, through her daughter, that asks for the beheading of John the Baptist. Okay? That's just a few chapters before. So we have all this unrest going on. And the Pharisees are there, and they don't like what's happening because their authority is being shook too. So they come to Jesus, and they pose some questions to him, like they have done at other times, to test him and to get him to say something that will either bring the crowds against him or the political realm that is in charge. And in this case, Herod Antipas. It must have been a sore subject for them, for sure. And so they ask him this question, not to really understand, but to test and to see if they can get a rise out of him and get him to say something that will turn Herod against him and get Herod to eliminate him from the scene. Mark's already aware of this as he writes in this whole thing about what has taken place. And in fact, Herod is aware and believes at some point in his levels of consciousness that Jesus might be John the baptizer resurrected. So the Pharisees come to him 
testing. And we're going to see what happens. It's one of these series of incidents. They ask for signs of Jesus. They warn. They come. And one time more. They want to get Jesus to commit to one side or the other so they can put him in the box. There were two schools of Jewish thought at this time on divorce. And depending on which way you went, that was how the divorce went. In the school of Shammai, they interpret the verse in Deuteronomy 24 to mean that a man may only divorce his wife on the cause of adultery. But the school of Hillel interprets it differently. And that passage, they may say that a man may divorce his wife for just about anything. You've heard the old joke about she burned the toast and he divorced her? Yeah, well, it could happen if that was the school of thought that you followed. Trivial reasons were not uncommon reasons for divorce. It's interesting, though, too, that this passage gets combined in this same scene with Jesus and the children. And the one verse that we all love and probably has been printed on little watercolor prints of Jesus and the children. Why are we talking about these things together? Jesus banded them together because he is talking about these groups of people. A woman who was divorced in the first century had very little recourse. She had almost nothing. And in fact, it would be very difficult for her to remarry. If, however, she had a certificate of divorce, it was possible that she could marry again. Not likely, but possible. Children were also overlooked and had very little to stand up. They didn't stand up for themselves, and very few people stood up for them. They were also the powerless in the society at that time. Jesus is known during these times for standing up for those who are powerless. Time and time again, we have seen that. But here it is. Everything in his ministry points to devotion to the powerless and the vulnerable. The leper, the paralytic, the man with a withered hand, the demoniac, a little girl, a woman, a Gentile woman's daughter, a deaf man, a blind man, a little boy. He ate with sinners, tax collectors, the unlovable. He reaches out to those most vulnerable that others in the powerful of society have neglected. So we see an example in here of Jesus reaching out always to those who need it most. It's some years ago now, but remember years ago, and they still have them, remember the WWJD bracelets everybody was wearing? What would Jesus do? Meant to kind of spark that interest and get us to think about Jesus in his life. They've almost become a parody in some circles now, where those who really want to say it sarcastically. Well, what would Jesus do in this situation? We want to be careful sometimes asking what Jesus would do. Even in our world today, although we may not ask questions to test, question, excuse me, questions come at us every day that ask us to make decisions. Decisions which may divide or decisions which can bring together. 
And so we ask these questions not from texts of terror, but we ask questions to understand and to continue to reach out. What would Jesus do? More than likely, to those hurting, to those vulnerable, to those without any power, he would turn and minister to them and welcome them into the kingdom of God. Just like the little children, that these should be welcomed. That gives meaning to the verse from last week, that the last shall be first, and the first shall be last. So it's our challenge now, in a world that is divided in so many ways, instead of looking for more ways to cut the pie and to divide again and again and again, that we look instead for ways to unite in love, to love and accept and welcome, and to take each other into our hearts. What would Jesus do? I think that's what he would do. Not present us with things that divide, but continue to present us with things that come together and thereby extend the kingdom of God. Let's pray. God, in our world today, there are so many things that divide us. Help us to sort through and not bring more division, but instead to bring unity. Guide and direct us so that we may not have our way, but Jesus' way. Continue to be with us in every facet of our lives. And as we struggle to live in community together, let us feel your hand and your heart leading and guiding us. In your name, amen. Now, stand and sing, either at home in your, out loud or here in your hearts as we join the band. Oh,
Together, let us join our hearts in prayer as we pray for those that we know and for those that are known only to God. God, as you have made us children and heirs of your promise, we pray for the church. We pray for the world, for our community, our families, and all people. We pray for all those in need. Come and help us, not divide us, but unite us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You desire for us not to be alone and to live in community with one another. Strengthen relationships between nations and people that we might celebrate and support one human family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You share our experiences and struggles. Bless all who live with mental or physical disability. Inspire creative communities, spaces, and environments that are accessible and hospitable and welcome others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You have established and nurtured relationships that extend beyond those that are gathered here today. Bless those who can no longer travel to worship with us. Remind us of their continued role in this community of faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You promise eternal life to all your children. Thank you for the people of faith who have gone before us. Strengthen our trust that we have in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts that are known only to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you all. Please safely extend a sign of peace to your neighbor. Now please be seated and... Um, snuggle up if you're at home and we want to give thanks and remember at this time we give thanks to you for the offerings which you continue to support this community with those of you who mail them in or do them through your bank's bill pay system we appreciate that those of you who are here in person that drop off envelopes those of you who um, drop off things here in our drop box we appreciate that knowing that the, the, the money is collected here not only support this community, but go far beyond this into our community and the world. And we thank all of our musicians today for their offering as they offer their music and their talents to us.
We're going to do something a little different. We're going to sneak in the word of the day right now. So for those kids that always just skip to the end of the service and listen for the announcements, shh, don't tell them. The word of the day for today is grace. All right. Please stand and join me in prayer. God of abundance, you cause streams to break forth in the desert, manna to rain from the heavens, and we ask you to accept the gifts that you have first given us. Unite them with the offering of our lives and nourish the world you love so deeply. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy God, our bread and our life, our table and our food, you created a world in which all might be satisfied with your abundance. You dined with Abraham and Sarah, promising them life. You fed your people Israel with manna from heaven. You sent your son to eat with sinners and become food for the world. We remember that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life given for us, his rising from the grave, his body given up, we await his coming again to share with us the everlasting feast. By your spirit, nurture and sustain us with this meal. Strengthen us to serve all in hunger and want. And by this bread and cup, make of us the body of your Son. For through him, all glory and honor is yours, almighty God, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The table is ready. Ushers will direct you out at the close of the service and distribution will take place as you exit. Remember the body and blood of Christ given and shed for you. Amen. Just a couple of announcements as before we dismiss today. First of all, a very important thing is coming up, and that is that next week we're going to try starting two services again. Yay! We've been waiting for this for a long time. Um, we still don't have all the help that we need. So if you can help out in that service, and we especially need people for broadcast, advancing slides, doing ushering, doing reading, things like that. Um, we still need you. And so um, what's going to happen these first few weeks is that the staff is going to do double duty, and they will take on those jobs during that first service. But we need you to step forward. And um, we'll see, you know, how it goes after those first couple of weeks and start beginning training and putting people in. So we really, really would like your help with that. Um, also, just a note for those of our confirmands that those who are being confirmed this month, later this month, um, please watch um, for notices from Bob about when to pick up your robes. Um, the confirmation service will take place at the end of the month, so we are excited for all of our ninth graders coming to con uh, confirm and affirm their faith. Also, there will be um, a bonfire um, in one of our back fire pits. We have two, so we should be able to use at least one, um, and we'll um, have a bonfire on the 23rd. That's a Saturday night um, that is intended from the youth and family um, people, and it's 18 and over, correct, Bob? 
<laughs> Bob's a little, you know, maybe, maybe getting sleep deprived, but not as sleep deprived as his son because they've had a new addition to the family and welcomed a baby girl. So, yay. You're babysitting, right? You've been babysitting, losing sleep? Uh, not that much. <laughs> not that much. Okay. He will later. We'll get him. Um, also, the ne then the next day on Sunday is our trunk or treat on the 24th. And so we would especially ask for those of you who can decorate your trunks uh, or back ends of your car and um, be part of that for trunk or treat. Um, we tried it last year, but it wasn't a good year to try that, and we didn't have very much participation, but we're hoping for that. And so pray also for good weather for that weekend of the 23rd and 24th. So um, let's continue on and have some, some good participation in the events that are coming up. Please watch your Living News Weekly. If you're not receiving your e-updates, um, online, please make sure that you contact us with your correct email address. If we have your correct email address, perhaps it's going to your spam folder. So you need to go into your computer and um, take care of that on your end. We can't do anything about that. So please make sure that you're receiving all the updates from us that are coming in. Watch those as things happen because things change very quickly. So we're doing that. Now, as we go forward into life, remember that God is here not to judge, but to open God's heart with grace and forgiveness to receive us always, not to divide, but always to unite and receive God's blessing. May the Lord look upon you and continue to come to your heart with love and grace, smiling always at the work that you do in his name. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, one last time, let's join the band, either at home with loud voices or in here in your heart.
in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Mm.